What is up my Lorcana goons? My name is Kevin. Welcome to the Monday Market Watch. You are on the Lorcana goons channel. We're going to talk about some Lorcana stuff today. So a lot's been happening over the weekend. As you guys know, all these reprints came out, all these cards got announced, and now we even have all these prices dropping, right? Uh, so real quick, I do want to say, uh, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to Lorcana goons on YouTube if you like Lorcana content, and if you yourself are a Lorcana goon. And if you like Lorcana goon content that much, join our Lorcana a goon discord we have a bunch of goons in there who are talking about game theory who are talking about the prices and even about all the cards that just got announced so if you didn't know um you can download and update your lorcana app right now and see all the cards from chapter two because they just put them all on the lorcana app but anyways let's get into these numbers these prices because that's what matters right you want to be able to afford the game right <laughs> but right off the bat we are looking at the disney uh lorcana first chapter booster box on tcg player and you can see the prices are still in that $200 range. Now, I know a lot of people really want to pay MSRP, MSRP being around 150 ish you know? Um, but I do want to give a shout out to some of the commenters on the last video who were saying that you guys found boxes for as low as $120-ish, you know, um, around that range, less than $200 I saw in the comments. So thank you guys for letting me know. Um, thanks to you guys, I was able to go out of my way and haggle for a box, you know, for around that price, that $200. You know, I ended up paying 210 so I can't complain right uh, but anyways on TCG player if you want to buy a booster box it's gonna end up being about $238 um, that's with the shipping included that is by Jersey's CCG so shout out you guys for this lower than before uh, booster box price but it's still more than $200 close to that 250 range if you're gonna be paying for taxes right um, now are you guys gonna be paying this much for chapter 1 when chapter 2 is on its way uh, the rise of the Florida born is going to release this Friday Friday, and I think it's gonna be really hard to find. I think it's gonna be just as hard to find, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna be paying for these TCG player online pre-order prices. So um, again, I'm gonna say it every video, uh, I do not like doing pre-orders online. The only pre-orders I will do for a sealed product in TCGs is gonna be to do an LGS in person. So if I know the LGS or if I can make those, you know, face-to-face uh, -face interactions, I'll do pre-orders, but online, I'm not gonna spend $350 to pre-order this booster box. It's just, um, um, it's just not worth it for me. That's uh, extremely expensive and I, I, I do live in Southern California So it is a bit of a blessing. I do have a lot more accessibility to TCGs than other um, Places in the world do right so I do understand that but in my opinion don't think it's worth it uh, Unless you have money to spend you want to spend your money that way by all means But same goes for the 100 collector's edition for the rise of the floodborne gift set, right? These are actually uh, dipping a little bit I noticed people have been listing their pre-orders a lot lower than three fifty five hundred dollars so 200 250 is still not worth it in my opinion. Don't do it. They even got booster packs of Rise of the Florida Born already here for $20. $20, guys. $19.95, which should be included. I don't think it's worth it, uh, in my opinion. I have seen Chapter 1 booster packs sell for $20 at like Frankincense or other places. And again, if you want to play that Enchanted Lottery and try and get some cards, that's really cool. Um, everything is up in the air with card prices, though. And we can see that uh, not only through these uh, pre orders, but through the current market from Chapter 1, right? So um, a lot of these pre-order singles you'll see are going to be listed for like uh, over like $80, like this legendary Sad Boy Beast. This is going to be not going to be an $84 um, legendary. This uh, Gaston, this rare Gaston is not going to be a $24 rare. Nobody fights like Gaston. Nobody's priced to like Gaston, I guess. But it just doesn't make sense. This card is not going to be this um, expensive when the most expensive rare in Chapter 1 was Lilo. And we have Lilo Lilo. Limbo, everybody. Today's segment of Lilo Limbo is going to bring down the entire market. This was the most expensive rare in Chapter 1 at one point, and now it is as low as $4.75 by Hasty Goblin Games. Shout out, you guys. That's kind of crazy. Less than $5 for Lilo. You see what I mean? So do you want to pay $24 for that Gaston when this Lilo is all went all the way down from $20 to $5? That's wild. And you're going to tell me that those pre-order prices for singles are worth it? No. Never, 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 forever, never. I definitely am surprised though. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think the reprints would make the prices come down this much. But Zach Stone said something important last uh, last Market Watch. He was he was mentioning how in this game you're limited to the, the colors you can use. Uh, a player is limited to the cards you can use. Um, so you're really gonna uh, only be able to make certain decks. So only certain cards are gonna be used, you know, during the formats. And um, what's cool about it is that it, it, gets, it lets people like me who just love opening packs and who 
just love building decks. I can make multiple decks, right? Because the cards aren't expensive right now. The singles for non-foils are super cheap. So I can make multiple decks comfortably and take multiple decks to locals. You know, again, I am in a very privileged situation and I acknowledge that. I know some people simply can't afford to play uh, these card games. It's, it's an expensive hobby and I get that. And I do want to see the sealed product that go um, as low as these market single prices. However, sealed product is always gonna end up being more expensive because it's always gonna have that collector's value um, where people are gonna wanna have the booster box set up on their mantle forever or packs and stuff like that. So um, those sealed products are always gonna be more expensive than the singles. But if you just wanna play the game and start learning how to quest for, for 20 going on, you Either TCG player, eBay, I think it's card market if you're in the if you're in Europe. Picking up the singles that you need um, for your deck is, is is really important, I think, if you just want to play the game, especially in a time right now where the prices are so low. So Lilo Limbo dictating not only the regular card prices, but basically the enchanted uh, prices as well, because we have the enchanted Elsa as low as $504 with 90 cents. Shipping included. This is by Red Rhino. Shout out you guys. So look at this enchanted Elsa, guys. This card sold for double this price in the same year literally like two months ago I think right um, it, it sold for a thousand dollars multiple times this enchanted Elsa and now we're seeing it as low as five hundred dollars uh, on TCG player 500 bucks is a really low price compared to what it was and there's people who claim that this card is still gonna uh, tank and go lower in price what do you guys think I personally think it's probably not gonna go lower than that like four hundred dollar range if anything but some people are saying that because the, the way they're gonna constantly reprint chapter one they're just gonna keep um, the price is just gonna keep dipping under even close to like the hundreds of dollars of ranges right but it's not just Elsa that has been taking a nosedive it's the other enchanted as well enchanted Tinkerbell is less than $200 now that's kind of cool right I actually kind of want to place it of the I still can't afford it no I can't but now that it's less than 200 bucks like part of me just wants to save up that little extra money you know and just get a play I have one so I just kind of want to get three more for no reason because I have a problem. I love this card. It's not even gonna be that great in chapter two. It's still gonna be good, but oh boy, resist is a crazy game mechanic. Anyways, um, I, I think I think this is might even go lower because of the way resist works in the meta, right? And if that happens, I might get more. But as of right now, the enchanteds are hitting less than $200 and they might go lower given the amount of reprints that keep happening. Same thing with Hades. Hades is nearing that $100 mark as, a, as the lowest enchanted available. Uh, we have Adventure Avenue, with a uh, near mint hollow foil Hades for $115 shipping included. Shout out you guys for this low, low market price. That's cool. If you guys wanted to collect the enchanteds, now might be the time. See, instead of me getting the other three Tinkerbells, I might just get three enchanteds because they're as low as almost a hundred bucks. So I can find somebody who can who can give me a deal on those. That's a really good come up in my opinion. I just like the enchanted rares. I think they're pretty cool. I still want to get my enchanted Maui signed by the rock. Shout out White Breezy for that idea. Check out his Lorcana channel. He makes good Lorcana content. Also check out, look, John Silver, this legendary price, um, along with a lot of other legendary non-foils have been just taking a big nosedive. We all know John Silver has just been going up and down this format. And I even thought that John Silver was going to keep its value because I still think this is probably the best Emerald Legendary, you know, that Emerald has to offer, including from the cards in Chapter 2. That Beast is pretty cool, but I still think John Silver is a little bit more mandatory. Anyways, uh, I think that this card is a is definitely a little, uh, should be more than $20, but you can find it on TCG Player for as low as $16.50 um, by Hasty Hobbling Games, Stuff for Sale, Cory Smash Cards. All these people have it for $16.50 for your legendary John Silver. This card was hitting highs as uh, this card was hitting as high as close to thirty dollars for the non-foil, and now it's basically half off. But don't get me wrong, John Silver was a ten-dollar legendary when the game first started. When Lorcana first chapter first um, came out in August, uh, like late August, um, they were on TCG Player for ten dollars. So it's still higher than it was if you pulled it from the first day. Um, and then the foil John Silvers they did dip under forty dollars. Those have been coming down as well, which is kind of crazy because um, last week we looked at the foil market uh, along with the legendary and they were sustaining their value but this week they're taking a little bit of a of a dive too uh it fell about like five to seven dollars so now you can find foil john silvers for about 35 dollars instead of that 40 dollar mark same thing with elsa spirit of winter elsa spirit of winter was once a 40 to 50 dollar legendary non-foil and now you can find them as low as 24.45 as the lowest verified tcg seller by wicked p cards uh, but there's a lot of non-verified people selling elsa as well for about less than 25 dollars so 
You can find your legendary it Elsa's now for a $25 non-foil. This foil was really expensive at 1.2. I remember we did a market watch video, one of the first ones we did, and Elsa was hitting peaks of about $99, close to 100 bucks for the foil. And now you can find the foil for as low as $60. Uh, you know, so lowest verified seller we have with more than a thousand sales is gonna be Nerd HQ, 57.75 with five bucks shipping. So about $66, $65 for the foil uh, legendary Elsa. Um, it's, it's, it is a difference from $100 obviously but that was when the market was at its peak and granted you know these reprints are gonna have more um, but quite frankly I think the foil market is where it's at. I'll get to that later though we also have Bell strange with special this was a $30 legendary this fell all the way down to $23 ish $25 all these legendaries are now in the $25 range even dipping below $25 range right but same thing uh, the cold foil on the bell is keeping its value kind of this has just been the same price for the cold foil bell since the beginning of the first chapter it's still about $60 with um, MKETCG with the lowest uh, verified seller six fifty nine ninety seven for a foil bill. So um, you know some of the legendaries still keeping their value during this uh, during this market crash, uh, but some of them are dipping. Like the like the legendary Rapunzel, the legendary foil Rapunzel um, is as low as eighty three dollars. So not it's it's not it's not the the cheapest foil legendary on the market, right? Um, but it is cheaper than that hundred hundred and ten dollar mark that people were paying. So you did pay a premium if you wanted to go to locals two weeks ago with your shiny deck, and now. Now, if you want to hollow out your deck, you know, you're paying a little bit less. And I think Rapunzel is just as good in Chapter 2 than it is going to be in Chapter 1. So uh, if I can get some foil Rapunzels, I, I, I just need one more non-foil Rapunzel to finish my playset. It's just been so hard to find. Some of these legendaries are still impossible to find, it feels like, right? Um, but now we have Cusco, uh, one of my favorite cards in the set, a very important rare for Emerald. Um, this card has basically gone down half in price. At one point, it was peaking at $20, more than $20 uh, for the rare, and now you can find them as low as $10.13. $10 is going to be your price for Cusco's right now. Even the foil Cusco's are cheap, cheaper than than what I than what I paid, unfortunately. <laughs> um, you can find some for as low as $18 for the foil Cusco's. So you can foil out your deck. Um, now, but and, and you're basically paying the same prices you were paying that you were a couple like three weeks ago. So if you, uh, you if you weren't playing Larkana yet and you've been thinking about it, just buy all the cards hollow, and it's basically like you bought them two weeks ago. Um, we have Ariel Spectacular Singer. Um, this card was hitting peaks of twelve dollars when the market was at its highest, and now we see it as low as three ninety with a dollar shipping or four dollars four fifty. So it's going to be about four dollars for your Ariel Spectacular Singers. These foils were also peaking for close to twenty dollars, and now the foils are about fourteen dollars. I remember when Ariel itself, the non-foil, was $12, so you see what I mean? We have the Tinkerbell, Giant Fairy, the best super rare in the set, in my opinion. No longer in that $24, uh, $25 range, all the way down to $12 by Hingle Boys, lowest verified TCG player seller. And then we also have Health Points. This guy got 5,000 sales. He has it for $14, with shipping included for your Tinkerbell Giant Fairies. That's pretty wild. Still a very good card. Might be really good in Chapter 2. Might no, I don't know. Resist is crazy. You can get them. You can get the foils though for twenty dollars flat, which is pretty good. Because again, that's how much the non foils were at one point, and now you can just get the foils for twenty bucks. Genie on the job. This super was about four to five dollars, but now it's two dollars. Look how much the market is crashing, by the way. Even all these little guys, especially actually all these little guys, they used to be four to five dollars for these super rares. A dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Look at this queen. The queen is a very powerful card in my opinion. You even get shift characters in chapter two for queen. Uh, the lowest verified is going to be for. $2.57 by Pokelander TCG. This card used to be about five, six dollars. Now it's only like two, three dollars. Grab your swords. This is a card that comes in the starter deck. Used to be about six to seven dollars at its peak. Now you can get them for $2.96 by Card Crack. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so shout out to you guys. You guys have them. Those verify for two ninety-four. So about three dollars. Um, even the foils for this card were kind of expensive at one point. Um, these used to be like fifteen dollars at their peak, and now uh, they're hitting about ten to twelve dollars on their foils. So still a foil that is you retain some of his value the queen also by the way um is retaining some of his value as a cold foil if you have it so the queen cold foil is still about eight dollars i remember it was about ten dollars so not not a huge uh difference in the fall there which is always good to see uh so again if you have some of your cold foils for your deck that you've been hollowing out then i think that i think that goes a long way um check this out though flynn rider and cheshire cat by the way 
I guess it's pronounced Cheshire Cat or something. I'm sorry. Flynn Rider, Cheshire Cat. Pretty crazy. These cards are no longer $3 uncommons. These used to be like $3 uncommons for, you know, the, the, the Emerald is very popular and they were just hard to pull. Now there's just a gang of listings and you can find them for as low as a dollar with $1 shipping by Dungeon Games IN. Shout out you guys for dictating this new low, low, low Flynn Rider price along with Cheshire Cat. This one too. S same people. They have them. Dungeon Games IN. A uh, dollar with nine. 99 cents shipping shout out you guys you guys are really changing the market today um this is really gonna make a huge impact because people are going to be able to play their emerald cards a lot with a lot more affordable budget um these cards used to be three dollar uncommons and now you can find them for a dollar that's a huge difference we have you have forgotten me this foil rare was five dollars and now it's still around three dollars and fifty cents plus a dollar shipping we have this by jdog gaming shout out you guys you have three of them available that's pretty cool this foil uh peaked at about five bucks and it's like 350 so hasn't really fought on a lot i do want to go over some foils that are still um um, kind of like kind of like relevant but also some foils that are falling like this one uh, jasmine queen of agraba this foil was selling for about eight dollars nine dollars at its peak at one point and now it fell all the way to uh five dollars competitively right so we have a couple different sellers here that have it for 5.99 5.99 um which is pretty interesting um and then we also have a uh, rafiki mysterious sage these were about five dollars for the cold foils and now you can find them for as low as 270 uh, with a dollar shipping whole new world this cold foil at its peak was $35 back in September when everyone thought this was the best card with the best deck, right? And um, even even a couple weeks ago, uh, you were finding them for about $20 for uh, the cold foil, like around $19, $18. But now the cold foils have dipped all the way um, to $15.75 by Unsolved Gaming right here. So um, this card itself, the non-foil used to be uh, $15, $15. And now you can just buy a foil for that same price. Olaf is a still, a still a pretty cool foil if you pull it, um, since you guys are going to be opening a bunch of packs now, right? Um, this... Uh, foil is always going to be uh, close to three dollars uh, we have it at 260 with 99 cent shipping by cbdy game shout out you guys um, i think some of the foils are important to pay attention to especially um the legendary foils because some of them because some of them have actually not changed at all um with this recent market crash like hades the infernal schemer for example this legendary has been um up and down the market in general but the cold foil listings are always low there's only 12 listings for this hades um the lowest very being at $50 by KT Collector, $50 with five bucks shipping. And then if we go to the lowest verified with more than a thousand sales, it starts to get a little pricey, $55, $60 for the foil legendary Hades. So this foil is still the most expensive, like one of the most expensive foils for legendaries that I've seen. Um, I, and in general, after opening up um, um, uh, some packs and seeing people open up boxes, it just seems like the, the foils are really hard to pull in general, especially a foil legendary. So um, I opened up a box recently and all my foils were terrible like hey you know what i mean um so um it's foils are really where it's at and if you pull some foil legendaries um you, you're gonna you're gonna see a pretty penny in my opinion uh so that's pretty cool that the market hasn't necessarily um like tanked every single card there are still some cards and especially um some foils that are still worth it um mickey mouse brave little taylor this foil at its uh, peak was hitting as high as like 90 dollars um which is obviously um extremely exaggerated it's mickey mouse to cover card um but right now during this market crash uh, the foil that i can find is uh, lowest verified with more than a thousand sales is going to be Corbin Card and Games. They have it for $49.95. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's still a $50 uh, cold foil legendary. Um, some of the cold foil legendaries are always, are, I think most of them are, I think almost all of them are more than 20 bucks, right? Um, Maui, uh, Hero to All, this foil is going to still be about $9, close to $10 for the foil. You know, if you guys are opening packs and uh, making sure, make sure you guys get your value out of these cards. Uh, St uh, Stitch Rockstar, this Stitch Rockstar um, is not, this is not the price for the regular one, this is the price for the foil uh, the regular non-foil used to be this price back in august september and now the foil is going to be about close to 20 dollars. so we have lowest verified um prophecy gaming co at 19 dollars. so you know if you pull these cards still pretty cool um obviously if you, if you pull them in foil even better because right now the rockstar stitch is only about seven dollars uh, a non-foil um hades lord of the underworld this is a rare foil that is still about eight dollars um on the market which is cool some good pulls right here when you're opening packs we have white rabbits pocket watch a foil that is still going to be about four dollars we have low is verified with more than a thousand sales with hh collectibles for 489 so that's about five bucks right there shout out you guys shout out you guys and then we also have zeus god of lightning um this card is another rare foil that is still going to be 
uh, about five bucks, you know, so 450 is gonna be the lowest for the foils. And then the last foil I wanna go over is B Photo. This, I just wanna make sure you guys are paying attention to uh, when you're buying uh, this card or trading for this card. Um, it is not a 12, $11 foil if you're buying it from the reprints of chapter one. If you guys are gonna be paying that high, make sure you're paying that high because it is the pre-eroded version. And if you just want a regular foil B Photo and, and you wanna pay way less than that, make sure you're finding the eroded photo so you can only pay two dollars so tcg player really needs to fix this i see that there's still sales happening for uh, the foil photo. there's a lot of sales happening for the foil photo right here on november 12th november 12th a gang of them like you know and they're all 10 12 dollars and there's uh, there's no need for that and unless there's a way to actually um uh, differentiate between you getting the eroded or not eroded version then you should not be buying these online guys you know just make sure that you're paying uh the right price for your cards and make sure you're valuing your cards correctly i i have been playing card games for a long time and one of the worst things is um, realizing you traded a card that was worth more or you could have gotten more out of it and I know it's not that big a deal for some people but in general it's just not a good habit to create an environment you don't want people to rip each other off um, you want people to actually uh, respect each other's uh, like trades and binders and stuff right and then one more thing I want to go over some graded stuff I do want to give a shout out to the commenters again uh, we did have somebody specifically request we go over some uh, graded information so I just want to briefly talk about the information that I know about graded uh, graded cards because quite frankly I don't know much about graded cards getting cards graded it, it, for as far as I know is, is a little bit newer to the TCG community Pokemon has made a huge impact on every other game and obviously the popularity of Pokemon and getting those cards graded has made it so that other people start grading their cards in other games right uh, however in TCGs uh, when it comes to cards that don't have like that novelty niche uh, like cards that are seen in competitive play like let's say a foil Rapunzel um, these cards the pricing is usually dictated by how relevant they are in the metagame now Disney is a is a big IP and it is obviously a um, it's case by case basis and we're dealing with a very specific situation here because it's Disney now I, I don't know how Disney collectors work I know that there's the pin traders and I know there's people who obviously collect statues a card game is very niche though in my opinion so uh, getting cards graded is probably something that you that you can do if it's something you're gonna keep for your own collectibles sake you know but if you're trying to like turn a profit then I don't think the card card game market is necessarily um, going to be nice to you in that sense just because a lot of the times card game markets are very volatile and usually getting stuff graded is gonna have a novelty in other games because back in the day nobody used to grade card games right they were only grading sports cards and other things like that but nowadays because it's become such a trend um, a lot of people who open up these Lorcana packs they're opening it up with the intention to get cards graded so because of that there's always going to be a supply of graded cards so i'm not huge on getting the lorcana cards graded in my opinion or buying them because they are kind of a hefty price when i'm bigger on just playing the game itself so in my opinion i, I don't see a reason for me to buy like a psa 10 um, foil uh, Rapunzel um, because I'm, I just want my four foil, my four Rapunzels that I can play in my deck, right? But what's cool about Lorcana is that it's always going to have this collectability because it's Disney, right? And a lot of these cards that are being played, like actual foil Rapunzels, they're not going to be in mint condition a, a year from now. The, the Rapunzels in my deck, I'm shuffling my deck every day, you know, every time I'm playing. They're not going to be, mo uh, you know, not going to be as good as a PSA 10 Rapunzel. So I do understand, like, the why people want, want that or why there's an interest in it. I just think right now at this very moment, um, unless you're getting the card graded and you pulled it out of a pack, then you know maybe it might not be worth it to start to, to do them yourself. But maybe the Enchanteds might be worth it, right? Because the Enchanteds are a lot different than the foils. The Enchanted market uh, for the PSA stuff though has has crashed like just straight up. You know, I, when the game first came out, there was a lot of hype and people were selling their Enchanted uh, PSA 10 Elsas for like fifteen hundred dollars, and it, it was ridiculous to be honest. Um, and yeah, you know, you could argue scarcity. How many are there gonna be? But like I just said, people are opening up. People are pulling these Elsas with the intention to get them graded it's not it's never going to be the same as it was when people were pulling charizards back in the 90s and nobody knew what grading cards was you know what i mean so um i think if you can if you do want them i think now is a great time to start looking at them because in the future like and i'm talking like whoo in the future future right yeah they probably will hold like a a value because this game is going to be awesome and i'm very i'm very confident that this game is going to last a long time and i'm also very confident that disney collectors are always going to appreciate what this game 
has done for the community, right? But in general, yeah, now is a very good time to buy them because these cards have crashed. The PSA 10 Elsa has just sold for a thousand dollars today, and that that's the most people are going to be paying for a PSA 10 Elsa now, which is like you know a, a big difference from paying like fifteen hundred dollars even more. I saw some people paying for that, right? If you do want some graded cards for Lorcana though, in my opinion, I'm always going to just point you in the direction of the D23 promos. The D23 promos are the only first edition Lorcana cards. That's just fact. They literally have a first edition marking on it, and they're the only cards that are gonna have that. There's I, there's seven of them, technically. Six foils and one non-foil, which is the Mickey BLT. Now, these cards, I think, are the ones that are worth grading, mainly because there is, there is a limited amount of printing. I think Ravensburger confirmed there's only been 900 of the foil uh, D23 promos that were printed. Now, that is an actual number that we can keep track of, and that is actual data we can keep track of. That is actual scarcity we can keep track of, whereas everything that gets printed in the booster packs and the booster boxes it's, it's widely available and there's going to be a big supply of it making the demand not as huge whereas when there's only 900 of these foils it makes sense why we have rock rockstar uh stitch selling for 1400 dollars today right um we also have a uh, maleficent dragon that sold for 1685 almost 1700 dollars psa 9s both of these by the way psa 9s not even the psa 10s the psa 10s are going to be selling for around three thousand dollars minimum for the rockstar stitches right so over the weekend, there has been some more D23 promo sales. This Corella Deville is really low, by the way. Wow. Um, a PSA 9 Corella sold for $860 on bidding. That's kind of low, actually, <laughs> in my opinion. So... It, so this is this is what I would get. I actually have had some, and my brother actually has a set graded, and I think these might be worth it. Oh, just because these for sure have a, a specific type of novelty. You know, all in all, do your own research. This is not financial advice. This is all my opinion. Realistically, I spend my money when I buy cards, and I'm just thinking out loud. And at the end of the day, you know, I love playing card games, and but I, I need to be able to afford to play card games. So I like doing market watches. I like staring at the market because I want to know when I can make smart purchases, and that's. Really Really all it is eventually when I can stack up my bread enough I would love to own the d23 promo set and have that you know have that sealed and have that in my arsenal because as a like wannabe collector I do want all these things but you know um, eventually I will get there <laughs> uh, but that is all for this market watch thank you guys so much for watching lurk on goons my name is Kevin we will see you goons next time remember to like comment and subscribe to lurk on goons if you like this content and join our discord all right you goons enjoy the rest of your week